One thing that's come up a lot in this class, a question I've seen a lot on the forums is how do I organize code? You don't want to keep all your stuff in one Python file. What's the correct way to organize things? The first thing I have to say is there's no correct answer. Code organization, whether you're writing web apps or you know any other type of software, is something that kind of comes from experience and you kind of develop your own style. When I'm building a web app, generally things start off in one file. And in this file, we probably have a section for handlers. These are the classes that define what we do when a particular URL is hit. Almost every framework I've worked in has this notion of a handler. Um, it also has this notion of a, a URL mapping. This maps a URL to a particular handler. You know, we've dealt with this a lot in this lecture. There's also some DB stuff, some objects, the models, the things we're actually working on. You know, blog posts, you know, pieces of art from ASCII Chan, links and comments and that sort of thing. And then almost immediately I have separate files for static content, things like CSS, JavaScript. We haven't done any JavaScript in this class, really. Images, I store separately. Now, you could you know, encode them into your file, but that doesn't make sense, right? You just store them separately. Generally, you serve them separately as well. App Engine makes it easy to do that. Another thing that's almost always separate from the beginning are templates. I almost always have templates from the beginning. I didn't teach them from the beginning in this class because I didn't want to have to explain HTML and, and new Python and also this kind of new kind of mini language of templates all at the same time. So I've never actually taught templates directly in this class, although most of you seem to be using them at this point. You found the documentation, people have talked about them in forums. So these are always separate. As things grow, this file here is probably my main file. It's actually often called main.py, at least for me. The first thing I do is I pull out the DB models. And I generally have one file if it's required. We don't need this in App Engine. Refer to it as the ORM. I almost always write my own ORM. I don't really like the homebrewed ones. ORM stands for Object Relational Mapping. This is a piece of code that basically maps your Python objects to the relational database. And so it often, you know, have a little query language that compiles into SQL, that sort of thing. We haven't had to deal with any of that in this class because the App Engine provides it to us. The db.model thing we've been using to interact with the Google Data Store, that's basically an ORM. The data model underlying it isn't strictly relational. It's effectively what it's doing. It's taking your Python objects and abstracting away the, the querying and cursoring and all of that stuff you have to do to get stuff in and out of the database. And I generally have a separate file for each type of data. So in our case, you know, we've been talking about posts and art. As our systems grow and you have more data types, you know, and users, I generally pull those apart into different files and have a bunch of class specific functions in each of these, you know, password hashing and all that stuff would go in the a user's file and, you know, functions to get the top posts and top arts would go in those separate files. So I kind of pull all of that out. Next thing I almost always have is some sort of utils. I usually have a, a utils file or utils module, you know, a series of files in a directory that basically have all of the random stuff, things like make secure val and make salt and random string, you know, handy things. Generally, I want to put as much into utils as I can, it's just a list of flat functions that have no dependencies on any other part of the project. The reason I do this is so that I can test these things. These are often little helpful files that any piece of the project can manage. You know, I have a lot of date manipulation stuff in these files, a lot of string manipulation, escaping stuff, all of those sort of functions that I write, I usually put in a file. You know, it usually starts out called utils.py. It's really important that it's always a one-way inheritance. Handlers can import from utils, database can import from utils, anything can import from utils, but utils never brings in other parts of the project. And that keeps, that just kind of keeps things simple. And if you think about it that way, you'll have this nice clean file of a bunch of handy functions. And if you look at Reddit source code, there's maybe about 100 handy little functions that we use all over the code. And I usually throw that in one spot. And then the final thing I do, and this usually takes more time as a project grows, is I take handlers out of main.py. I might have separate files for each type of handler. For the homeworks, I may have a separate file for just the blog, separate file for ASCII-chan, separate file for those unit2 ones, the rot13 stuff. And then main.py is basically the URL mapping and then a bunch of imports. And then these guys would import, you know, whatever database pieces they need. Kind of keeps things separate. And sometimes it's really hard to enforce this. And you can have what's called a circular import where one file, rot13, may depend on some generic files that are defined in main.py, which depends on the actual handlers in rot13 itself. And you get this kind of circular import. And generally, when you start having circular imports, that means it's time to pull some common piece of functionality out so the inheritance only goes one way. For example, I have that generic handler. I think I've been calling it blog handler in my homework solutions that just kind of has all that helpful stuff on it. That would get pulled out into its own file so that main.py could import it if it needs it at all. The big kind of groups of handlers can import from there as well. You know, that's basically how I organize things. I'm, I'm going to draw a slightly different picture of how the file system might look. We'll leave it at that. Now, again, this may not apply to you, but this is what's worked for me. So I usually at my top level, I have main.py. I probably have some sort of 
a common file that's called like handlers.py or, or something of that nature that basically has the kind of generic handler, things that happen on every single request. And then I'll probably have a directory called lib that might have some of the DB stuff, which may have all of my models. It may have utils.py and any of the uh, kind of specific stuff that we're doing. Got that generic handlers.py. We might have the other handlers, the blog.py, the rot13.py, that sort of thing. And the bulk of the code is either in handlers.py or in each of these specific things. These are the pieces that import from all the other parts of my projects. And that's generally kind of how I start. Things grow from there. And of course, you all know, have directories for templates and static. And I'll keep things organized that way. And if we need subdirectories in either of these, I may add them. But actually, generally, for me, my template structure is just a monster pile of templates. And of course, as you get more advanced with templates, these can start inheriting from each other. And I almost always have something like a base.html. And then most of my main templates will inherit from this. There you go. I hope that helps. Many of you have been asking. So let's move on to the next piece.